A very good afternoon. You're watching the midday news on Rajya Sabha Television. All the developing news stories at the top of this hour coming up in the next 30 minutes. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor, and these are the headlines. Two Jaisi Mohammed terrorists killed in an encounter with security forces in Jammu and Kashmir's Pulwama. Army major among four soldiers martyred. One civilian killed in exchange of gunfire. Search operation on. Prime Minister holding bilateral talks with the visiting Argentinian president at the Hyderabad House. Both leaders to discuss issues of mutual interest in economy, nuclear technology and space sector. Set back for Vedanta as Supreme Court refuses to allow reopening of Tuticorin plant in Tamil Nadu. Sets aside NGT's order of opening the plant, says NGT has no jurisdiction to order plants reopening. President Ramnath Kovind presents a Tagore Awards for 2014, 2015 and 2016. Award bestowed upon individuals or organizations for outstanding contribution towards promoting values of cultural harmony. And a four-day public hearing in the Kulbushan Jadav case to begin at the International Court of Justice at The Hague from today. Indian national Jadav lodged in a Pakistani jail on charges of espionage since April 2017. The big story coming in from Jammu and Kashmir where two Jaisi Mohammed terrorists were today killed in an encounter between the security forces and terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir's uh, Pinglan area in Pulwama district. Four army personnel including a major were also martyred in the encounter. A civilian was uh, also killed in the exchange of fire. Meanwhile, the encounter continues as security forces suspect one more terrorist is holed up. Security forces launched a cordon and search operation during the night after receiving inputs about the presence of terrorists in the area. The encounter broke out after the terrorists fired upon the security forces. The encounter comes in less than a week after one of the deadliest terror attacks in Pulwama's Awantipora area where 40 CRPF Jawans were martyred by the Pakistan-based jaish e mohammed terrorist organization. More news from Jammu and Kashmir, where the security cover of six separatist leaders, including Mirwais Umar Farooq, was withdrawn on Sunday. The order said that besides Mirwais, uh, the security covers of uh, Abdul Ghani Bhatt, Bilal Lone, Shabir Shah, among others, have been withdrawn. While there was no categorization of security for the three leaders, uh, the state government, in consultation with the center, had provided them ad hoc security keeping in mind the threat to their lives from some militant groups. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, during his visit to Srinagar on Friday, had said that security given to people getting funds from Pakistan and its snooping agency, ISI, should be reviewed. Algaawadi hain, jinko huriyat kehte hain. Woh Pakistan se baat karte hain. Unko kaj jaga se funding aati hai. Aur sabse ki peeda ki baat ye hai, सुरक्षा भारत सरकार से, सुरक्षा कश्मीर सरकार से, और कश्मीर में अलगावादीय आतंकवादियों पर मुलायम और आशीर्वाद ये तो नहीं चलेगा ना। भारत कश्मीर को भारत से अलग करने वाली किसी कार्रवाई को स्वीकार नहीं करेगा। जम्मू कश्मीर भारत का अंग है और रहेगा। तो स्वाभाविक है कि आप अपने अलगावाद की बात करिए, ले� भारत और कश्मीर सरकार की सुरक्षा के तले आप अलगावाद की बात करेंगे, सहयोग लेंगे भारत सरकार से, कश्मीर सरकार से और भारत को तोड़ने की बात करेंगे तो ये नहीं चलेगा। तो अगर ये फैसला हुआ है, कश्मीर सरकार ने फैसला किया है, तो अच्छा स्वागत योग फैसला है। ये फैसला पहले होना चाहिए था। जम्मू ऐसे लोगों की जगह जेल की सलाखों के पीछे है जम्मू कश्मीर के गवर्नर महोदय ने बहुत अच्छा कदम उठाया है हुरियत वालों की सारी सुरक्षा वापस कर ली गई है वक्त आ गया है कि हुरियत के तमाम लीडरों को दिल्ली की तिहाड़ जेल में या जोधपुर जेल में बंद कर दिया जाए 
क्योंकि इन लोगों ने जम्मू कश्मीर के अंदर बेगुना लोगों का कत्ल किया है मीन वाल द सी आर पी एफ हैजाइड टू ट्वीक द स्टैंडर्ड ऑपरेटिंग प्रोसीजर्स और द एस ओ पी इज फ्रेम टू सिक्योर इट्स कॉन वॉइस इन द वेक ऑफ अ न्यू थ्रेट वेर एन एक्सप्लोसिव लार्डन व्हीकल वॉज डेटोनेटेड बाय अ टेररिस्ट अलॉन्ग साइड द फोर्सेज बस इन पुलवामा सी आर पी एफ डायरेक्टर जनरल आर आर भटनागर सेट दैट अपार्ट फ्रॉम ट्रैफिक कंट्रोल देर विल बी चेंजेस इन द टाइमिंग ऑफ कॉन वॉयस their halt locations and movement in coordination with the other security forces like the army and the jnk police he said that two convoys have been run after the attack at latu mode in pulwama and these new measures are being tested and implemented as part of the sops Meanwhile Pakistan has called back uh, its a high commissioner for India for consultations amid heightened bilateral tensions after the Pulwama terror attack Pakistan high commissioner to India Sohil Mahmood was on Friday summoned in New Delhi by foreign secretary Vijay Gokhale who launched a strong protest over the killing of uh, 40 CRPF soldiers in Pulwama Indian high commissioner to Pakistan Ajay Basaria was also earlier called to New Delhi for consultations in the wake of the attack Now, India, remember, has called uh, Pakistan-based Jaish-e Mohammed terror group to be behind the Pulwama terror attack. Responsibility for the attack was, in fact, taken by Jaish-e Mohammed. On to some other news. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj is on a three-nation visit to Bulgaria, Morocco, and Spain. During her visit, Sushma Swaraj made a brief stopover in Iran on Saturday. Iran and India delivered a stern message to Pakistan days after both the countries lost soldiers to the attacks carried out by terrorists operating from the Pakistani soil. Sushma Swaraj met with Iran's deputy foreign minister Saeed Abbas Agachi and after the meeting Agachi tweeted India and Iran suffered from two heinous terrorist attacks in the past few days resulting in big casualties in my meeting with Sushma Swaraj the Indian foreign minister where uh, she had a uh, stopover in Tehran we agreed on close cooperation to combat terrorism in the region enough is enough he said iran also summoned the pakistani ambassador to protest about the suicide bombing in that country that killed 27 of the iran's uh, elite revolutionary guards near the iranian border earlier this week the commander of iran's uh, elite revolutionary guards has blamed pakistan's army and isi agency for the attack And earlier on her visit to Bulgaria, Sushma Swaraj hailed India as a land of opportunity and invited the Indians living in Bulgaria to invest in the country and participate in its transformative journey. Addressing the Indian community there, she also lauded the diaspora for its commendable role in boosting bilateral ties. Sushma Swaraj is the first ever Indian external affairs minister to visit the Balkan nation. Earlier Sushma Swaraj paid floral tributes at the Mahatma Gandhi statue in the South Park in Sofia. She also met her Bulgarian counterpart. And after visiting Bulgaria, External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj on Sunday arrived at the Moroccan capital Rabat on her maiden visit to the North African nation where she will meet the country's top leaders to discuss ways to consolidate a strategic partnership in various sectors of mutual interest. External Affairs Minister Sushma Swaraj will uh, meet her Moroccan counterpart and political leadership during the visit and three MOUs in the areas of counter-terrorism, housing and urban uh, settlements and youth matters are expected to be signed between India and Morocco during the visit. Swaraj will also interact with the Indian community in Rabat and on the last leg of her visit the External Affairs Minister will visit Spain. Meanwhile, uh, India will present a dossier against Pakistan for its role in abetting global terrorism at the ongoing Financial Action Task Force summit in Paris. Now, India will present a dossier demanding uh, FATF uh, to blacklist Pakistan for the terror links and for its involvement in the Pulwama terror attack at the plenary session of uh, the International Terror Financing Watchdog. The details of the terror attacks carried out by the Jaish-e Mohammed in uh, the past will also be mentioned in the document. The Paris, the Paris headquartered Financial Action Task Force will be also told through the dossier how the Pakistani agencies are providing funds to Jaish-e Mohammed. 
The FATF blacklist means that the country concerned is non-cooperative in the global fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. And if the FATF blacklists Pakistan, it may lead to the downgrading of the country by multilateral lenders like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, and also a reduction in the risk rating by Moody's, the S&P and Fitch. Pakistan has, remember, been put on the grey list of the anti-terror menace uh, watchdog in uh, July last year. Bilateral talks between Prime Minister Narendra Modi and visiting Argentinian President uh, Mauricio Macri are currently underway. Both the leaders are holding uh, talks on issues of mutual interest in key sectors like the economy, nuclear technology and space. President uh, Macri is on a three-day official visit to India. He was earlier accorded a ceremonial welcome earlier in the day. Macri is accompanied by a high-level delegation comprising the Speaker, Foreign Affairs Minister and other top government officials. During his visit, he is also slated to meet President Ram Nath Kovind. Macri's visit to India follows the Prime Minister Modi travelling to Argentina in late 2018 for the G20 summit, during which the leaders had a very productive bilateral meeting. The state visit of Macri is uh, taking place in the 70th year of uh, formal diplomatic relations between the two countries. He will also visit Mumbai tomorrow. Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Sunday inaugurated and laid the foundation stones of several development projects in Bihar and Jharkhand. Prime Minister Modi laid the foundation stone of Patna Metro Rail project worth over 13,000 crore rupees through a remote at a function in a Baroni in Begusarai district. The Prime Minister initiated the construction and dedicated a number of projects in oil and gas sector worth over 15,000 crore rupees and launched several development projects of civic works, clean Ganga mission and railways. He also laid the foundation stone for medical colleges at Chhapra and Purnia and also for the upgradation of the government medical colleges at Bhagalpur and Gaya and reiterated that the, the NDA government was giving a lot of importance to the health sector. He also paid a tribute to two CRPF Jawans of the state who were martyred in the Pulwama attack and said uh, that he was filled with grief and outrage just like the people of the country. और मैं अनुभव कर रहा हूं आपके और देशवासियों के दिल में कितनी आग है जो आग आपके दिल में है वही आग मेरे दिल में भी एंड लेटर इन द डे Prime Minister Modi also unveiled projects related to health, education, water supply and sanitation worth over 3,306 crore rupees in Jharkhand. He inaugurated four rural water supply schemes in Ramgar and Hazari Bagh and laid the foundation stone of six more rural water supply schemes in these two districts and also an urban water supply scheme in Hazari Bagh. He inaugurated a women engineering college a building in Ramgarh through remote and three medical colleges in Hazari Bagh, Dumka and Palamu and Jamshedpur. He said the government has taken several development initiatives in the past four and a half years for the upliftment of all sections of society. <laughs> स्वच्छता की दिशा में बहुत सराहनीय काम किया है साढ़े चार वर्ष पहले जहां स्वच्छता का दायरा सिर्फ 20 प्रतिशत था वही अब झारखंड ने खुद को खुले में शौच से मुक्त कर दिया है रघुवर दास जी उनकी पूरी टीम इनके प्रशासन के सभी छोटे बड़े मुलाजिम सबको मेरी तरफ लाख लाख बधाई इन मिड डे न्यूज टाइम फॉर अ वेरी शॉर्ट ब्रेक न्यूज एंड अपडेट्स कंटिन्यू ऑन द अदर साइड स्टे ट्यून
Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Garden, a scenic park spread nearly 100 acres in the heart of New Delhi, is rich repository of history, preserving the remnants of two dynasties who ruled the city for over a century. Today, this park is among the choicest of location for joggers, fitness enthusiasts and nature lovers. Besides species of birds and trees, the Green Park it is also home to area of historical monuments which were built during the 15th and the 16th century under the rule of Lodis and Sayyids, including the tomb of Muhammad Shah Sayyid and Sikandar Lodi, Bara Gumbad, a gateway attached to a three-domed mosque, medieval era water tank and art pula, an eight-pied bridge across the lake built during Mughal Emperor Akbar's reign. Before 1936, the garden was identified with scattered monuments and irregular bushes. Why Serene, Lady Willingdon took the initiative to curate the gardens and make it more ornate. Initially known as Lady Willingdon Park, post-independence the gardens were renamed as Lothi Gardens. Reserve Bank Governor Shakti Kanta Das has said that he will meet the heads of public and private sector banks this week to discuss the transmission of interest rate cut to borrowers. The important meeting will take place on 21st of February. The decision was taken at the post-budget meeting of the Central Board of the RBI today. The meeting was also attended by Finance Minister Arun Jaitley. You see, transmission of uh, rates is very important, especially after the central bank announces a rate cut. As already uh, stated in our uh, post-MPC press conference, uh, I am having an interaction with the CEOs and MDs of uh, the various banks, both public and private sector banks, and that is now scheduled to be held on the 21st, uh, uh, 21st of this month, that is in the latter part of this week. So we will discuss that issue with the banks and uh, see what needs to be done. On to the other top story this afternoon. In a big setback to Vedanta, the Supreme Court today refused to allow reopening of its uh, Sterlite plant in Tutikorin in Tamil Nadu. A single judge bench, however, granted Vedanta liberty to approach the High Court. The court was hearing a plea by Vedanta Group seeking a direction to Tamil Nadu Pollution Control Board to implement the NGT order which had set aside the government's decision to close the plant. In an order on 15th of December last year, the NGT had allowed Vedanta to restart the plant, setting aside the Tamil Nadu government's order of closing down the Vedanta-owned Sterlite Copper Factory in Tamil Nadu. However, in today's order, the Apex Court said that NGT has no jurisdiction to allow the reopening of the plant. Remember, at least 13 people were killed and several others were injured on 22nd of May last year when the police opened fire on people protesting against the environmental pollution being caused by the unit. Six days later, the Tamil Nadu government had ordered the State Pollution Control Board to seal and permanently close the plant. Today, the Supreme Court has given judgment that Vedant is a copper smelting plant. उसको खोलने की बात थी लेकिन सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने कहा कि ये प्लांट अभी हम नहीं खोल सकते हैं 
क्योंकि आप आप यानी स्टरलाइट और वेदांत सीधा एन में चले गए और एन के बजाय उनको अब यहाँ मद्रास हाईकोर्ट में एक पिटिशन फाइल करनी पड़ेगी And the International Court of Justice in Hague will hold public hearings in the Kulbushan Jadhav case uh, from today. Former Solicitor General Harish Salve is expected to represent India during uh, the four days of public hearing. While India will argue first, Pakistan will get its chance to make submissions tomorrow, followed by India's reply. With Islamabad making closing submissions on 21st of February, the ICJ's uh, verdict is likely to be delivered by the summer of 2019. Jadhav, a retired Indian Navy officer, was sentenced to death by a Pakistani military court on the charges of espionage and terrorism in April 2017. India had then moved the ICJ in May the same year against the farcical trial by the military court of Pakistan against Jadhav. and in its written pleadings india accused pakistan of violating the vienna convention by not giving counselor access to jadhav and on 18th of may 2017 a 10 member bench of the icj had restrained pakistan from executing jadhav till the adjudication of the case Back home, President Ramnath Kovind presented the Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony for the years 2014, 2015, and 2016. Today, the Tagore Award for Cultural Harmony is given to individuals, associations, institutions, or organizations for their outstanding contributions towards promoting values of cultural harmony. The award was presented to Raj Kumar Singh Jeet Singh for the year 2014. For the year 2015, the award was presented to Bangladesh Cultural Organisation, Chayan Youth, and for the year 2016, the award was bestowed upon Ram Sutar Wanji. The award was instituted by the government in 2012 to recognise the contributions made by Rabindranath Tagore to humanity at large with his works and ideas as part of the commemoration of his 150th birth anniversary for promoting values of cultural harmony. The award is conferred annually and carries an amount worth one crore rupees. A citation in a scroll, a plug, and an exquisite traditional handicraft and handloom item. The jury comprises the Prime Minister of the India, Chief Justice of India, Leader of the Opposition in Lok Sabha, or the leader of the single largest opposition party in the House, and two eminent persons. As such, ladies and gentlemen. all three of our award winners today are not just emblems of the plural and singular beauty of india's culture and cultural harmony but are also linked to the life and brilliance of rabindranath tagore i am confident that the beauty of cultural harmony and the brilliance of tagore will continue to help define our national life and our engagement with the world साथियों गुरुदेव का कृतित्व और उनका संदेश समय काल और परिस्थिति से परे है मानवता की रक्षा के प्रति उनके आग्रह को आज और मजबूत करने की आवश्यकता है आज दुनिया में जिस तरह की चुनौतियां हैं उसमें गुरुदेव को पढ़ा जाना उनसे सीखा जाना और अधिक प्रासंगिक है गुरुदेव जी ने लिखा है मैं सोया और स्वप्न देखा कि जीवन आनंद है मैं जागा और देखा कि जीवन सेवा है मैंने सेवा की और पाया कि सेवा ही आनंद है हम सभी सेवा का ये भाव यूं ही बनाए रखें देश की संस्कृति को और समृद्ध करने के लिए कार्य करते रहें Army Hospital Research and Referral commemorated its foundation day on Sunday. Army Hospital Research and Referral provides a state of the art medical care to the armed forces personnel, veterans and their families from across the length and breadth of the country. The event was attended by a bevy of dignitaries from the armed forces and guests from a broad range of disciplines with a stake in providing affordable healthcare of the highest quality in the nation. The Indian Army Medical Corps also honored Rajya Sabha Television for ground report on Army Hospital Research and Referral. The glorious history of Army Hospital Research and Referral Delhi Cant is incomparable. 
It has the unique distinction of catering to combatants in all wars fought by our country. It has kept pace with a rapidly evolving healthcare system and has maintained its leadership as a center of excellence, not only for the armed forces medical services, but also the nation. To showcase the quality medical care and the facilities available at the Army Hospital, a film was made by the Rajya Sabha TV last year. The film has been received very well, it has received wide acclaim, and the hospital has won many accolades after that. It is indeed our privilege today to be able to screen this film for our veterans who have built this jewel in the crown of the AFMS brick by brick. Sports news now. Indian cricket captain uh, Virat Kohli remained on top uh, while teammate Cheteshwar Pujara managed to hold on to his uh, third position in the latest IC Test cricket rankings. Kohli is uh, leading the chart with 992 rating points ahead of New Zealand skipper Kane Williamson with 897 points and Pujara with 881 points. Besides Kohli and Pujara, no other Indian features in the top 10 list. However, in the bowlers list, India's Ravindra Jadeja is placed at the fifth spot with 794 points. Jadeja also features in the all-rounders list at the third position ahead of West Indies' Jason Holder and Shakib Al Hassan. And that is the wrap on this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.